everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany, here with my co-host Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Hudson Institute Senior Fellow Rebecca Heinrichs and Chairman of O'Leary Ventures, Kevin O'Leary. There has been deafening silence from progressives and many of those who claim to champion women. That's what they say. As more evidence comes out revealing that Hamas has used sexual violence against Israeli women. Indeed, that is undeniable. There is a plethora of evidence. Congressional Progressive Caucus Chair, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, was questioned on the lack of outrage over the rapes of Israeli women. And instead of just denouncing the horrific acts, we have video footage, she found a way to spin them, demanding, quote, balanced criticism of the war. And now her shocking response has left her facing fierce backlash from both sides of the aisle. Here's what she said. I've seen a lot of progressive women, generally speaking, they're quick to defend women's rights and speak out against using rape as a, as a weapon of war. But downright silent on what we saw on October 7th and what might be happening inside Gaza right now to these hostages. Why is that? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's true. I've condemned what Hamas has done. I've condemned Specifically all of women. the actions. Absolutely, the the rape, the of course. Frankly, uh, morally, I think we cannot say that one war crime deserves another. That is not what international humanitarian with, with, law says. Okay, with, with respect, I was just asking about the the women, and you turned it back to Israel. I'm asking you about Hamas, in fact. I already answered your question, Dana. I, I said it's horrific, and okay. I think that rape is horrific, sexual assault is horrific. I think that it happens in war situations. Terrorist organizations like Hamas obviously are using these as tools. Mm -hmm. However, I think we have to be balanced about bringing in the outrages against Palestinians. Yeah. 15,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli airstrikes, three quarters of whom and it's, are women and children. And it's horrible, but you're, you don't see Israeli soldiers raping um, Well, Dana, I think women. we're not, we're not, I, I don't want this to be the hierarchy of oppression. Give me a break. Hierarchies of oppression. Okay, let's be crystal clear. There is one side that has raped women, that is Hamas. There's one side that has raped children, that is Hamas. There's one side that's taken hostages, that is Hamas. There is one side that has set babies on fire, that is Hamas, and the list goes on and on. And if you don't believe me, because it appears some of the world does not, Harris, check this out from the New York Post. This is an eyewitness account. Difficult to hear if you have a child, remove them, but we must hear it because people are denying this. I saw this beautiful woman with the face of an angel and eight or 10 of the fighters beating and raping her were called a witness. She was screaming, stop it already. I'm going to die anyway from what you are doing. Just kill me. When they finished, they were laughing. And the last one shot her yep. in the head. Well, and what we are, what we are knowing from the 47 to 50 minutes of, of tape that some journalists have been able to see, have chosen to see, are the cries for help. Do you know what it takes to break a woman's pelvis? <laughs> I mean... The uterus, where we, where we carry babies. Mm. Those bones protect. I mean, it's just unbelievable the harm that you can do with that type of brutal rape. But I, I want to go something back to something that Jayapal said. She said, well, we don't want to play the game of hierarchy of, of crimes here. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit. This is a war crime, by the way. Even according to the United Nations, which seems to have lost its throat and not spoken up. But, but it is a war crime even there. Thank you to former Secretary of State for the Resolution, Condoleezza Rice, in 2008. So thank you to her. But it didn't get the UN to talk. They're still silent. But just think about what Jayapal is saying. She's saying that whatever is happening to the Palestinian people is far more important than any sort of war atrocity could ever happen to a woman or a child. She, in fact, is playing the game of atrocity hierarchy. And I just want to know why. I want to know why she's doing it. It certainly doesn't help the Palestinian people. I want to know why people in her party aren't now as loud as they could ever be. Yes, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, I think uh, Steve Hilton just mentioned her. There are a few voices going on. They ought to be, you shouldn't even be able to see the cement out front of the Capitol Hill. 
Every step should have a lawmaker on it, and they should be Democrat side by side with Republican. This cannot stand. Yeah. These are war crimes, and we've agreed as a civilization that it's a war crime. And look, it wasn't just the women. You, you, you think they left it there? No. They raped not. children, too. They, they raped what... Because it, she said it's a tool of war. What does that even mean? It's torture. It's, it's a war crime. Uh, and I wish people could be clear on that. One woman who has been clear is Sheryl Sandberg. Here she is speaking at the United Nations moments ago. There are exactly no circumstances that justify rape. None. That's why the silence on these war crimes is dangerous. It threatens to undo decades of progress, to undo an entire movement. The world has to decide who to believe. Do we believe the Hamas spokesperson who said that rape is forbidden, therefore it couldn't have possibly happened on October 7th? Or do we believe the women whose bodies tell us how they spent the last minutes of their lives? Who are we going to believe? Emily, why can't all so-called feminists be as clear as Sheryl Sandberg? Um, <clears throat> and as she stands at the UN, reminder that UN women decided to condemn Hamas's disgusting atrocities eight weeks after yes. October 7th, not unironically after November 25th, which was their international day for the elimination of violence against women with a non-ironic hashtag, no excuse. There is no excuse for UN women's silence, for the globe's silence, and for Congressman Jayapal's moral equivocation. And the slap in the face that she continues to engage in, in addition to all of, all of those who, who, who cite some type of moral equivalency and tight, cite that hierarchy that you spoke about. Ironically, however, she's the one that called it a slap in the face when now Justice Kavanaugh was confirmed. She said she was moved to tears by the deeply credible and brave testimony by Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. What about the testimony of those bodies? The what video. about the videos? Mm -hmm. What about the footage that makes us nauseated, unable to speak, just hearing about it, let alone imagining those that lived it and continue to live it? And she chooses to say, as a member of the House Judiciary Committee, I will do everything in my power to ensure full oversight and accountability. We'll never be deterred in the fight for justice, she said. She says the, the confirmation's a slap in the face. And to those survivors of sexual assault who are weeping and despondent, I send courage and strength. Where is that conviction now? It's appalling. It is. Rebecca, there is footage. To Harris's point, some journalists have seen it. In fact, 60,000 clips. There are 1,000 eyewitnesses. This is Hamas footage, by the way. Yeah. OK? Hamas footage. And I'm sitting there. Finally, eight weeks later, I'm on the plane. I pull up. UN women finally, eight weeks into this, decides to condemn this and not even a standalone tweet. Not even a standalone tweet. It was a reply to a tweet condemning all violence. And here's what it said. You have it here. We unequivocally condemn the brutal attacks by Hamas on Israel on October 7th. We are alarmed by the numerous accounts. It took eight weeks to get alarm from the United Nations. Eight weeks. United Nations has been terrible on this. But also, did you notice that the Congresswoman began her response by saying she wasn't even sure that that happened? She said, I don't yes. know about that. <laughs> so there is video evidence. Of course she knows. So I think it's important just to point out that, of course, she knows. But what she's really doing here, it's kind of a sleight of hand. She's, she's providing moral cover mm -hmm. for what they did because, you know, there's the, the, the progressive left has been saying, you know, um, we saw this during the riots, that if there's a, a group that is weaker or persecuted, that they can use violence in order to fight the oppressor. And that is what I perceive as being implied by this, that, yes, it's a weapon of war. It's an illegal crime against humanity. Yeah. But this has been a feature of what Hamas has used against the Israelis. And, Kevin, you know, I want to take a walk down memory lane. Here's what Jayapal thinks of the state of Israel, as said in July. Roll the tape. I want you to know that we have been fighting to make it clear that Israel is a racist state, that the Palestinian people deserve self-determination and autonomy. She apologized. She said Israel's not a racist state. But when you view this in aggregation of the constituencies she represents, Omar, it's all about the Benjamins, the various things. Rashida mm. Tlaib has said not condemning the killing of babies. 
there's a lot of anti-Semitism over on that wing of the party. I, I was going to say as we were debating this that this conflict is unique. If you think about war over the last 30, 40, 50 years, never has there been a conflict where every single event is actually captured on a camera. Pretty well 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's not 60,000 clips, there's 60 million clips. And they circulate around the world by the second they occur. And for the first time ever, it's affecting policy. I've never heard an aid package that's being put through Congress ever considered to have covenants on how it would be used in a conflict. That's happening today, hmm. both on the Republican and Democratic side saying, if we're gonna give $14 billion to Israel, we don't like the way they're prosecuting this war from the images we're seeing because our constituents are uncomfortable now. Hmm. Well, war is hell, that's what it is, and this is one of the most hellish wars ever because it's seen every day, everywhere. I just got back from Geneva this morning. The news in Europe is these images every day, all day. And even the BBC runs both sides of the story with just horrific video that is swaying the populations of these countries back and forth every single day based on the imagery they just saw the last 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so here in America, we're at a new place. We, I've never seen a debate, and it's also affecting the Ukraine. It's new policy. If we're going to grant military aid and weapons and weapon systems and bombs, we want to say in how they're used and when they're used. Have you ever heard of that before? Hmm. Did they put that on Putin? <laughs> exactly. And, and my point is, I've never seen it. And then who actually would write that law? I mean, how do we hmm. tell the leadership of any country we're giving these weapons to, how to use them based on the video that's coming out of the country at, at the front lines. I mean, this is unprecedented. I don't know how it gets resolved. It, it's new policy, but it just shows you that images of, of children on either side, this is horrific video, and rape, which is, which is a war crime, any of this is changing policy. Yeah, well, and that's what we should be talking about. One side engages in the mass rape of women. One side, their name is Hamas. Do not forget it. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.